Well, today is uh, Friday, April 1st, 2022, and we've been talking through Psalm 19, 7 through 11, and I promised you we'd talk about this area of how the benefits would re- increase or decrease according to whether you obeyed, and so here's what happens. When you and I stay in a healthy, progressive, on-fire relationship with Christ, we have protection from curses of life apart from Christ. Let's read the scripture. Let's talk about this. Psalm 19, 7 through 11, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. I, I've made this statement over and over in my life because there's benefits, but there's also this, this blessing if I obey because God can't bless what he's cursed and he can't curse what he's blessed. So I want protection from the curses of life when I live my life apart from Christ. So every day, I've got to be walking in obedience to the Lord. If I'm not, here's what happens. There's a decrease in benefit. When I walk in obedience, there's an increase. Now, I'm not talking about material increase or decrease. Huh? And that may happen or may not happen. That, that's immaterial to our conversation for the most part. And you, you may be wealthy and never obey Christ. And you may be wealthy and obey Christ 100%. But the wealth is not the determining factor. Your obedience to what God commands is the, the whole reason for your success in life. In other words, I, I'm saying you can't be successful unless you obey Christ. But if you don't obey Christ, see, what he hasn't blessed, he has cursed. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. In, in the sense of our spirit and emotions and so forth. In Christ, we're protected from guilt. When I obey, I don't have any guilt. I, I frequently told people I don't have any reason to, to remember what I've said because if I'm always telling the truth, I don't have to go back and cover a lie up with another lie. I don't have to keep covering my bases when I tell the truth. So in Christ, I'm protected from guilt. I'm protected from emotional distress, from shame from loneliness, from disrupted relationships. See, when you and I miss what God's been trying to tell us and we fail to abide in the hope of the gospel, we have a decreasing, not an increasing benefit. I know you've heard this, but every every sin brings a consequence. And we're trying to teach our children this and our grandchildren this and great-grandchildren this. We're trying to teach people this that are our friends and our neighbors, people that work with us, that if you make a choice and you decide to disobey what God commands, there's a consequence. And, and we don't know how far that consequence is going to flow down. Next generation, two or three generations, 10 generations. I mean, there's scripture about this. I'm not going to go into it because we could talk about that for hours. See, whether I yield right now to the Holy Spirit or I go ahead and sin, but I I recognize it and I turn to repentance and I'm drawn to repentance because the Holy Spirit's at work in me, by the way. Praise God for that. See, when he's at work in me, I either yield to him and, and I'm drawn to repentance or I reap the restless nights, the sour attitudes, the poor me syndrome, the self-destructive, self-mutilating demonization created by falling away. When I disobey, I'm falling away from God, and that brings me under the curse of the sin that I've committed. The only way to remain in the benefits, the place of great reward, we've talked about all week long, is to stay on fire for God. Pursue God with everything that's within us. Hate sin, love righteousness. See, God created you and me in his likeness. In his likeness. Think about that. You and I were created in God's likeness and so we could relate to him and enjoy the blessing that comes from being 
right with him, being godly, if you want to put it that way. I believe every believer, follower of Jesus Christ, who's turned from their sin, repented of it, come under the shed blood of Jesus Christ, given a seal by the Holy Spirit that they belong to him because he identifies them as sons and daughters of God, that we were destined to live happy, fulfilled lives. I did not say free of trouble because that's the message so many are preaching. You don't have any problems. Yeah, you're going to have trouble, but your life's going to be fulfilled and you're going to be happy because you've been doing what God said. The storm clouds rise. You're anchored in Jesus. <laughs> we were made to know the gratifying joy of being accepted, approved of, appreciated with the ability to freely love and to be loved. We were designed to experience a fulfillment and satisfaction beyond measure, a contentment and peace beyond understanding, and an abundant life beyond belief. And I want to tell you that that kind of meaningful life comes only from living in fellowship with God and conforming to his likeness, obeying what he says to do. Sin all but destroyed God's design in every single one of us. But because of Jesus Christ, we've been adopted into God's family and the transformation process has begun in us, allowing the divine nature of God to permeate every aspect of our life, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. See, when we give up following Christ even for a few moments, well, decrease. We end up throwing our lives after some lust or pleasure that cannot bring the kind of blessing God is preparing to thrust into the life of one who is obedient. So you want the increase of God's blessing? Just keep obeying. You don't know when it's going to come. You don't know what form it's going to come in. How much protection he's given you from things you didn't even know were happening. Huh. The blessing of the Lord, it makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. doesn't say the blessing of the Lord makes one wealthy with human dollars whether they're pounds or yen or American dollars. No, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Your spirit's rich. Your life is rich. You're, you're a servant. You're a giver. You got peace of mind. You, when you walk around people, there's something about you that attracts them to the living God. You're the aroma of life. Come on. Let's live for Jesus. Let's be obedient to his ways. Let's not let... The curse of sin reign in our lives. Come under the blood of Jesus Christ today and be free. Oh, Father, what a great message. What a great message. Jesus came and died on a cross for our sins, lived a perfect sinless life, paid the ultimate sacrifice, and now we are guaranteed life forever. I love you, Lord. You've been so good to me. You are excellent in all your ways, God. May that excellence come all over me. May that persuasion of godliness be all over my spirit. May I walk after Jesus. I pray that for those who are watching this video today, may a new thing happen because we've just simply obeyed what you told us to do. Thank you. Amen. Grace and peace. God's grace. God's peace all over you today. Surrender to his love and be that kind of loving person to others. Have a great day.